from the streets of Europe to the arenas of Asia. Basketball is everywhere. And nothing represents this passion like the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Since 1950, the game's greatest have starred in basketball's definitive global competition. Here, FIBA looks back through the tournament's rich history. We don't want that. the 12th edition of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. What was once an amateur event is now open to the stars of the NBA for the first time. Having sent college students and factory workers to previous editions, the USA are now instantly favorites. We knew that we were gonna win gold. You ready? Something catastrophic would have had to happen for us to not win. The USA's roster was known as the Dream Team 2. And some of the players from the Dream Team 2 squad, Shaquille O'Neal, Derek Coleman, Larry Johnson, Sean Kemp, wow, the list goes on. The original Dream Team had swept to glory in the 1992 Olympic Games. Nothing less would do for the class of 94. Our mission is to, to win eight games, and on the last game, get the gold medal wrapped around our necks. Make history. The USA began their campaign against Spain. They won by 15 points. Not a big enough margin for some. Oh my God, Donnie Nelson was our coach. He was very hard on us. I wasn't expecting that. He coached us like, you know, don't take these international games for granted. Tattled by Miller, his pass picked up, KJ Holloway! We came out and we just blew everybody out by 30. The United States winning this game in convincing fashion Maybe shutting up some of their critics. More than 40 years and 11 World Cups had passed without some of basketball's best talent eligible to play. The change would come thanks to one of the game's most influential figures. That was definitely a turning point in the history of FIBA. Boris Lastankovic saw the importance of having the collaboration and the close relationship with the NBA. He knew very well that you improve by playing with the best. I knew eventually it would evolve to that, you know, because basketball is universal, man. Boris Stankovic was the one who changed the history of our game. The USA made headlines in 1994, but other nations also impressed. Tony Kukoc and Dino Raja led Croatia to bronze, while the tournament's top scorer was Australian legend Andrew Gaze. Gaze again is good at the free throw line. Pulled down by Andrew Gaze in three point territory, drives the lane, takes it up, pulls it on the glass, and in! Andrew Gaze! Russia reached the final, but Sergei Belov's side wouldn't get close to the USA. This is the gold medal game of the 1994 World Championships of Basketball. Losing was not an option at all. Coleman instead takes the three and hits the first shot of the game for the Americans. Oh, baby! 
He had to show the world who was the best. We made a statement. I think these guys mean business today, folks. We were global icons. So that immediately planted seeds in these young players. Warning, down the pipe. And they say, you know what? I'm gonna represent my country and we're gonna beat the US. And the gold medal goes to the United States of America. We sparked something globally, which is why now basketball has grown internationally tremendously. You really can accredit Dream Team 1 and Dream Team 2 for that. FIBA's first global tournament took place long before Dream Team 2 dominated in Canada. The venue was Buenos Aires. The year was 1950. Nos entrenábamos a la mañana, a la tarde y a la noche. Así a, a nivel individual, entre full, estilo de, de costado, jam, ¿ves? 100, 200 tiros. Todos los días. Éramos jóvenes, con grandes deseos, eh, sobre todo de jugar, pero sobre todo representando a nuestra querida patria. One of FIBA's founding members, Argentina, welcomed nine nations to that first edition. It included the medalists from the 1948 Olympics and a Yugoslavian team featuring Borislav Stankovic. Argentina had finished 15th in the 48 Olympics. Había, este, ya de, lo, de Londres veníamos prácticamente con, casi con ese mismo equipo. Pero del primer partido, la Argentina ya demostró que algo, algo bueno tenía. Six countries progressed to a final round robin group. And the hosts were looking strong. Parecía que era uno solo todo lo que daba. Porque luchábamos por lo mismo y para respetar a los demás. They met Olympic gold medalists, the USA, in their final game. And on November 3rd, 1950, at Buenos Aires Luna Park, Argentina were crowned inaugural world champions. Terminó el partido y bueno, la gente invadió la cancha, por supuesto, los que estaban todos alrededor era y bueno, fue una fiesta total. Eh, ¿Cómo podría llamar? Los gritos, los gritos, Dios mío, la gente, Dios mío. Después, esa fiesta duró un montón de días. Y uno, yo lo tengo presente. Para mí, ya desgraciadamente no están todos los que estuvieron en aquel tiempo, somos pocos los que van quedando. Pero esa sensación que te produce Es el, el torneo, todo lo que vivimos. Lamentablemente, eh, por revanchismo hacia el gobierno de, de Perón, que había sido un gran apoyo para ese equipo, La dictadura persiguió a esos jugadores sancionándolos de por vida. Y esa sanción eh, significó que esos maravillosos jugadores quedaran ocultos y no tuvieran el reconocimiento que se merecían. Y hoy todavía te encuentro alguno y, y viene a saludarte. Ah, oh, usted es el mundial, qué suerte. Yo por ahí. No nació, <risa> bueno, no, no estaba, pero si se acuerdan es, es por algo, algo que, 
que ha quedado en el recuerdo de toda la gente. South America staged the first five tournaments, and in 1954, it headed to Rio de Janeiro. My story, it starts in the basketball Brazilian. I was 16 years old. Great. When I was invited for the first time to a Brazilian selection. The Mundial of 54 was the next. Brazil would win silver that year. The Philippines finished third, the greatest World Cup performance by an Asian nation while the USA took their first gold. Ali nós fomos pela primeira vez vice-campeão do mundo. Que ninguém dá valor, né? Que nesse país quem é vice é primeiro dos últimos, né? Brazil would win gold in Chile 5 years later. The outstanding team though was the Soviet Union. They defeated both Brazil and the USA and seemed unstoppable. Na fase final, o Brasil no, no agora no primeiro ou segundo, ele perde para a União Soviética. Só que o jogo seguinte da União Soviética era contra Taiwan. Taiwan que jogou como sendo uma FIBA registrou como sendo China. Veio uma ordem do Kremlin dizendo que a União Soviética e a Bulgária não jogariam frente à China nacionalista. Eles não ganharam pontos. Como eles não ganharam pontos, eles caíram de posição. A história, a história foi por causa de uma briga política no Brasil, mas a gente aqui esqueceu isso. Como aqui só interessa o ser campeão, Então a gente não tinha nada. Esse tiro do basquete muda a cabeça da torcida brasileira. The tournament returned to Rio in 1963, where Marquez and Brazil claimed a second world title. The addition also marked the dawn of a new era. For the first time, both the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia would medal, an unforgettable experience for a Yugoslav great. Moram reč da bolj se spominjam leta 63 v Rio de Janeiro, ker tam smo pa enostavno smo igrali, mi smo se igrali košar, ker nismo imeli novega pritiska, da moramo zmagovati. Premagali smo vse na sprotnike razne brazilce. Só que ali nós ganhamos deles e terminamos em victory. Nismo imeli novene možnosti. Mislim, da je bilo celo 20 košev razlike. Samo to je bil za jugoslovansko reprezentanco prvi in najboljši uspeh. Aí não deixamos margem para nenhum tipo de comentário negativo. Ali nós ganhamos de fio a pavio. the tide was turning. Uruguay staged the 1967 tournament, and it was the European nations that dominated. The continent's best were the Soviet Union, who had won the last five European championships. The jewel in their crown was Modestas Palauskas. Tribus Sąjungos sportininkai, kai nuvažiuodo į užsienio šalis, taip toliau, tokie laisvai pasivaikščiai, ekskursijos į kažkokios tai miestai, taip toliau, buvo labai konservuotai viskas būdavot. Buvo mes tokie, kaip sakant, truputį kažkokie kitokie. Legendary Soviet coach Alexander Gomelsky was in charge, and only Yugoslavia could keep pace. Their rivalry was growing with every tournament. Aš prisiminu į puikiai, nes į Europą visą laiką mums tekdavo, kai pats pačios svarbiausios rungtynės būdavo Europoje su Tarybų Sąjungoje Jugoslavijoje. 
Borba je bila vedno, Sovjetsko zvezo je bila vedno na nož in komovci so peli. Kaj tam dobi in vejde, ojec si prošel, veš, ne tiče. Vračamo na sprotniku z isto mero, kot on dela proti tebi. Ivo Deneju was named MVP, but it was the Soviets who took gold. Aged just 22, Palauskas was now a world and European champion. Ich kann mir sehr schön da lach vor dem. Ja, lepo e pritz so petu hallo tivoli. Die Leto sind es jetzt. Es wurde 50 Leto Tega. In 1970, the tournament left South America for Yugoslavia. Ljubljana's Tivoli Hall staged the final round. And after back-to-back -back silver medals, the pressure was on the host and their local boy. Koncem, ker sem se tistega leta januarja poškodoval s tegensko mišico, se mi je natrgala 40 metre pa do polovice. In potem so rekli, če jaz ne bom igral, da bo do ljudje se obrnili proti nam. In sem bil v ekipi, kot bi rekel, ena povezava med trenerjem in igravci. Daneju was one of the greatest Yugoslavian sportsmen of his generation. Blind in one eye throughout his career, Daneju had won six international silver medals before 1974, but never a major gold. Playing on his home court, that was about to change. Takrat se je pokazalo, da bo odločila tekma proti Združenim državam Amerike. V športu moraš imeti malo športne sreče. Takrat se nam je zdelo, da smo, ne vem, na loteriji dobili ne vem koliko milijonov. Mi smo bili generacija, ki smo utirali pot v razvoju jugoslovanske košarke. Lepo smo igrali. Publika je bila polna, cela dvorana, navdušeni, ploskali. Recimo, zanimivo je, da so gledalci, da so si izmislili parolo, ki je luna vaša, zlata naša. Američani so nam reče eno leto prej stopili na luno. Euforije, veselja in navdušenja. Daneju called time in his career shortly afterwards. He did so having captained his nation to its maiden world title. Okay. The Soviet Union only managed bronze, and as the 1974 tournament approached, they had surrendered a run of eight consecutive European golds. Jo, mes mišim ketvrtais iš karto atrodo laiko nedaug po... Tačiau... I don't know, from all of them, we had to go to the tournament, we had to go to the tournament, and we had to go to the tournament, and we had to go to the tournament. Their squad in Puerto Rico featured Alexander Belov and his namesake, Sergei, once voted FIBA's greatest player of all time. Palauskas remained their captain. You know, I was a young man. I was raised with such a bad luck, and I never thought when I was a captain, 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 I was a captain. The Soviet Union began by defeating Central African Republic by 92 points, the greatest margin of victory 
in any World Cup game. It led to a decider with the USA as both nations bid for a second world title. The Soviet Union were world champions again. For Modestas Palauskas, Lithuania's Sportsman of the Year a record seven times, this was the last international medal of his stellar career. In 1978, it was the turn of Yugoslavia to take back control. I was in the first place, 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 this tournament featured a gold medal playoff game for the first time. It would be a classic between two familiar opponents. The Soviet Union dominated us. After that, we were the the rivalry between these two nations was at its most intense. And as the 1982 World Cup approached, a Soviet legend was emerging from the state of Lithuania. At 7-3, Arvidas Sabonis came to redefine the role of a center, and Lithuania had produced another world-class player. Colombia hosted the 1982 tournament, and while Yugoslavia could only manage bronze, Sabonis and the Soviet Union would face the USA for gold. Gomelski was again Soviet coach, 
in another captivating final. Laiminiem ir šitas Duck Rivers. Visas varžybas traukia, super. Duck Rivers tas varbūt. In the four years that followed, Sabonis reached superstar status in his homeland. Now his nation's standout player, he headed to Spain for the 86 World Cup, a tournament now featuring 24 nations and the three-point line for the first time. But Gomelski was absent. Despite that, they would ease into the last four to face their perennial foes. Kadangi su ta pačiais Jugoslavais tas pusė nalis buvo. Dos kai markavan uno kai kai suelto por aguantando diez segundos le restan a Jugoslavia con Zoran Kutura canasta de Zoran Kutura. Toksai rimtas kešim aštuonios ant tris sekundės liko devyniais minus. De tres. Cuarta triple de Sabonis, 85-79, error ahora de Yugoslavia. Y otra triple, otra triple. Atención con Walter. Intenta el triple y lo consigue. Empate a 85, señoras y señores. Cuando se lanza desesperadamente y termina el partido. Somehow, the Soviets forced overtime, and they wouldn't stop there. Terminó el tiempo con la victoria de la Unión Soviética por 91-90. Tu toki y veíke varjuova, ¿no? En final, ya pasó que, que pasó hasta que hubo algo bisquis, ni a su dirbo trenderes, que podría su dirbo. As they had done four years previously, the Soviet Union played the USA for gold. But there was no second world title for Sabonis. For the first time in five editions, a name other than the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia was on the trophy. And the USA were world champions again after a 32-year wait. <laughs> Lithuania gained independence in 1990, and Sabonis would never appear in another World Cup. The Soviets' grip on the Naismith Trophy was slipping. After two bronze medals, a new Yugoslavian golden generation was emerging. This one? Well, at that time, got it. we knew, obviously, we were a really good basketball team, and uh, we had experience playing um, uh, Olympics in Seoul that we lost in the finals. But after that, we won a European championship in Zagreb, and we knew if we play our game, um, we're going to win it. For Tony Kukoc, this was the first taste of a World Cup. But three players remained from four years earlier, including 86 MVP Drazen Petrovic. It was a little stale after the prior generation. They could never reach the heights. And then Drazen came, and, and everybody in next Yugoslavia started to play basketball. They impressed en route to the semifinal, where they faced defending champions, the USA, and their new coach. Okay. Well, the ultimate honor for a coach is to coach his country's team. And I had that opportunity in the World Championships in 1990. Yugoslavia would be too strong 
from Mike Krzyzewski's Young Americans. Well, the Yugoslavian team in the late 80s and early 90s, they were as good as NBA teams. They were a machine, to be quite frank with you. They really influenced change in the game. Divac, Petrovic, Kukos. They had reached their first final since 1978. And once again, Yugoslavia met the Soviet Union. We knew how good they were as a team. Like it or not, these players were constantly around us. So we knew them very, very well. Yugoslavia were imperious. And Kukoc was MVP. When you win a championship and then you get the trophy as the MVP of the tournament, that it makes it extra, extra special. This was the last World Cup in which both teams competed as unified nations. Drazen Petrovic lifted the trophy, but would never play on the global stage again. While Kukoc represented Croatia in 94, Petrovic tragically died age 28. It was a, a huge loss. We knew how good of a basketball team we were, but missing a, a, a main part, something we never managed to cope with. And the Russians are going to join the Americans in the gold medal game. Croatia goes down in defeat to Russia. We ended up winning a bronze medal, but um, it was a somewhat disappointment for us. But now when, you, when you're talking about achieve, the achievements of the Croatian national team being third in the world, it, it was a pretty good achievement. Two European nations were leading the medals table, but it was a proud Brazilian who ruled the scoring. Oscar Schmidt. Você acha que eu vou trocar a seleção brasileira para jogar num time? <risos> De forma alguma. El rebote para Oscar. 35 jogos em campeonatos mundiais. Malabarismo de Oscar, jogada totalmente personal, canasta. Eu não fui para a NBA porque se eu fosse, não jogaria nunca mais na seleção brasileira. 843 pontos. Me ofereceram um contrato no cut. Eu falei muito obrigado. Eu só queria saber se eu era capaz. <risos> Ai, meu Deus do céu. Ah, meu jeito de ver o basquete era muito treino, meu amigo. Oscar, prova de três e canasta triple. Pensa que foi acontecer à toa, não. Quando o Ayrton Senna falou que falou com Deus, eu falei com Deus várias vezes. Olha, quando eu fazia uma cesta, eu já estava pensando na próxima. E quando eu fazia a próxima, eu estava pensando na outra. Meu jogo era esse, porque a página da assistência eu pulei. Em 1998, the FIBA Basketball World Cup moved to Greece. And after missing the previous tournament because of international sanctions, Yugoslavia were back. Now represented by players from Serbia and Montenegro, the 1990 champions reached the final once again. In 97, we won a European uh, championship in, in Barcelona. But then for 98, we changed all team. It was a young team, but we really want to prove that we deserve to be part of a national team of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia faced Sergei Belov's Russia, the runners-up in 1994. A sellout crowd is piling into the Olympic Stadium in Athens, Greece, for the gold medal game of World Basket 98. I think final game is a game for a big stars. And as for Bracha winning the toss, and Tomasevich wearing number 14. We really want to prove that we are the best. He knew it that when we succeed to be in, in the final, that we cannot lose. Drive, finds Mahalov, swatted by Robracha. Are you kidding me? 
this game was tight, you know, and, and they play really good, really hard. It was really tough game, but uh, from the beginning we knew that we were gonna win this game. This is it. Yugoslavia have won World Basket 98. The most important moments for us is not when we get the gold medal. It's the moment when we come back to, to Belgrade and we celebrate. That's the most emo emotional moment for us in our careers. It was a record fourth world title for Yugoslavia, moving them ahead of the Soviet Union and the USA. The states would then host the tournament in 2002. Despite losing twice, the defending champions reached the knockout phase. What is the difference between us and, and the rest? Because we always are the best prepared team on, a, on a championships. Uh, but unfortunately, that summer we didn't prepare ourselves good. You know. The reason why we start bad, it was because we wasn't in good shape. In better form were Argentina. The South Americans hadn't won a medal since their gold in 1950, but now had one of their greatest rosters. Yo te cuento un poco como entrenador, era eh, si nosotros ingresábamos dentro de los seis mejores equipos, para nosotros iba a estar muy bien. El equipo norteamericano y el equipo argentino. Y una vez iniciado el mundial y ver cómo estábamos, fuimos reinventándonos en nuestras esperanzas y en nuestros sueños e ir apuntando un poquito más para arriba. Argentina's form was so good that they ended the USA's run of 57 games undefeated. Cuando le ganamos a Estados Unidos fue realmente para el torneo fue espectacular. Quiero creer que hay un quiebre. Se rompe un mito. Cuando llegamos al hotel salieron todos los jugadores de todos los equipos y nos empezaron a aplaudir. Bueno, eso, bueno, te imaginas, debe ser la emoción más grande que mi vida. Y ha ido, yo creo que, que fue que a esta gente, por eso se la quiere mucho. The USA were stunned again, this time by Yugoslavia in the quarterfinals. The rest of the world, it seemed, now had nothing to fear. It was obviously that they are not on the on highest level, and especially they are not in good shape. But we was really surprised how Argentina was good. If we want to beat America, uh, we have to be on that level. The last four featured New Zealand and Germany, groundbreaking campaigns for both nations. But Yugoslavia and Argentina proved too strong. The gold medal game between these two would be one of the greatest ever. Bueno, ya habíamos llegado hasta ahí, había que hacer un esfuerzo más y se preparó de la manera más conveniente. Not since Brazil in 1963 had a nation won back-to-back -back titles. You know, sometimes there is a game that you believe you cannot lose. Si me decís, ¿qué es lo que puede haber llegado a fallar, tal vez? Bueno, ha sido un poco el timing de juego en momentos importantes. Like I told you before, finals are big games and for big players. Both teams could have won it in the final seconds, but the game would go into overtime. Still, I think that they think that they are better than us. But they didn't have a luck. <laughs> Having led most of the game, Argentina would let gold fall from their grasp. Porque dejamos escapar una una posibilidad en ese momento iba a ser historia. No hay mal que por bien no venga, dice un famoso refrán. Ya ahí este realmente fue un torneo para Argentina. I'm glad that I was part of many good teams, you know, but uh, be part of a national team, that's the crucial moment, that's the most important in all our careers. For Yugoslavia, this was a fifth and final gold. By 2006, Argentina were Olympic champions, 
while Greece were now Europe's best. And led by Theodoros Papaloukas, the Greeks faced the USA in the 06 semifinal. To να παίξει Ελλάδα με τις με την Dream Team είναι μια της χιλίας πιθανότητας να κερδίσει. Τα χιλία πια και τις ένα. Coach K was back with a glittering roster of NBA stars, but Greece would make history. Up ahead to big man Strutsenidis for the dunk. And just like that, it's 36-35. Εκείνο το ένα όμως που ήταν εκείνη η ροδιά ήταν το ραντεβού με την ιστορία και εμείς είμαστε να συνεπείς. Greece has stunned the United States of America. Theo Papaloukas kicks the ball up in the stands. Εγώ προσωπικά έτσι ήμουν. Ήταν τεράστια η χαρά. Θυμάμαι ότι πανηγυρίζαμε όλοι σαν μικρά παιδιά. Που ήμασταν και μικρά παιδιά τότε. Αυτό ήταν ένα από τα καλά. It will be a national holiday in Athens. They won't be going to work there, baby. Incredibly, even more drama was to follow in the other semifinal. Well, if you've caught your breath yet from that first game, you better put on your seatbelt because the Olympic champions, Argentina, are getting ready to face Spain. You just want to take care of your game and play whoever you have to face later. Uh, but maybe in the back of our minds, it's like, hey, this is a huge opportunity. The partido contra Argentina in finales is one of the partidos que yo recuerdo, si no el que más duros, más difíciles de, de toda mi carrera. Garbajosa for three. Count it. It was a dog fight. Uh, from beginning to the end. Fernandez for the dunk! How's that? Blocked by Gasol. Pau Gasol was Spain's undisputed star. Gasol has been playing like an animal. Another faultless performance saw his nation ahead with less than two minutes to go. I was getting the ball in the post, and my foot came out. And uh, I know I knew I was done. Pues fue yo el que me levanté de, del suelo y me dijo, me he roto. Y me dijo, uff, no, no, no puedo. Aguantó tirar los dos tiros libres absolutamente, bueno, con un pie roto. I put my team up six, and then I came out and I just hoped that my team would, uh, would finish it off. This is what it comes down to. One shot, one play. Nocioni in the corner. Off the ramp, Spain are going to hold on. They're going to the final of the FIBA World Championship. 75-74. I started crying at that time. My brother and Jorge took me to the center court to celebrate and hug my teammates. It was just a powerful, emotional moment for us. Spain were through, but they would have to face Greece without their talisman. I'll never forget. I walked down the hallway, just kind of poked my head, looked through the Spain locker room. These guys are like having a party. They've all got the same t-shirt on. Pau tambien fuego. Pau is also playing. I walked past the Greek locker room, and when I looked in that locker room, it was as if somebody had died. Garbajosa for three! Garbajosa! Tenemos con tanto deseo que llegábamos a puntear los tiros, llegábamos a tapar las defensas. Papalukas right into the hands of Juan Carlos Navarro. Superb performance of basketball, defensively, offensively. Hits it. I enjoyed so much from the bench. I was just a, like a little kid. Final score, 70 to 47. Spain just utterly thrashed them, and nobody saw this coming. Φεύγεις νικητής από το μικρό τελικό ή να βγεις δεύτερος αλλά χαμένος στο μεγάλο. Είναι ερώτημα που ακόμα δεν έχω βρει απάντηση γιατί... One of the highlights of my life, not just my career. If I could have given a choice, I would have broken my foot every time to know that the outcome was going to be that. In 2006, after losing to Greece, we came back 
and completely overhauled what we were doing. That was the start of us realizing what needed to be done to build a championship gold medal culture. Our goal in 2008 in Beijing was to win the gold medal, win the respect of our country, and win the respect of the world. Our job isn't complete yet. We need to seek to win the world championship. In our opinion, it's showing total respect to the basketball community around the world that we do take it that seriously. After finishing third in 2006, Coach K headed to Turkey in search of his first world title. It was the youngest team to represent us internationally since the college guys. Durant, Curry, Westbrook, Rose, all those kids, they're 21. I was just a little bit afraid of the, the tournament. You got everybody's nerves, you got butterflies, you got everybody that's really wanting to get off to a good start. And um, sometimes you can stumble in those first games too. They would do anything but stumble with Kevin Durant excelling. Durant emerged as the guy. I'm just happy that uh, I got an opportunity to play here uh, with, for the USA team. It's a great honor, so I'm just trying to do my best to come out and, uh, and play my hardest. The USA had reached their first final since 1994. The United States win it, 89-74. They would face Turkey, winners of an unforgettable semifinal with Serbia. They get it to Turkoglu. They get it. And Kotrin's going to drive and score. And unbelievable finish. Daryl Kotrin has won the game for Turkey. You know, you could feel the momentum. It, it like the ultimate home court advantage. It was really as good an environment as we played in during my 11 years coaching the United States team. And they're off. And our guys, thank goodness, loved being in that environment. Oh, Westbrook goes behind his back and oh. in it goes to Iguodala. They've taken some hits in international basketball over the years, but now the United States will be the number one team in the FIBA World Rankings. After a 16-year wait, the United States were world champions once again. Krzyzewski returned for the 2014 edition with another roster eager to succeed. This is such a great tournament to showcase the, the you know, best basketball in the world. And you, know, you have your, your pride of your country on your, on your chest and everybody's chasing that gold medal. And, and you want to be that team on the podium, you know, listening to your national anthem. Just as the Dream Team 2 had been 20 years earlier, the USA were imperious. This is by far the most important thing I've done so far in my career. I've just been dreaming about it. All these guys that are on the team, and you know, you realize that this is like a video game. I'm thankful that I'm part of this team, but now it's time to crack down on business and get a gold medal. No team came within 20 points as they marched into another final. That is the prize. The winner of this game will capture the prestigious trophy here at the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Serbia were their opponents, and they would be no match for Coach K's stars. And now the USA have the win in their sails. Irving shakes and bakes out top, then drives in and puts it up. In the gold medal game, they were lights out. Harden puts it up, and guess who showed up at the party tonight? James Harden. It was just utter devastation. The USA having won in 2010, they have done it back to back for the first time. It was the USA's fifth gold medal as they joined Yugoslavia as the two most successful nations in World Cup history. In 2019, the tournament opened a new chapter. Qualifying tournaments were held over two years, with 80 teams taking part. The game of basketball was truly global. This tournament is bigger. First time, 32 teams. Then it is played in the biggest country in the world. 
and for the first time with eight host cities. There were a number of global superstars in China determined to make the trophy their own. They were joined by FIBA World Cup ambassadors Yao Ming, Dirk Nowitzki, and also Kobe Bryant, who tragically died in an accident a few months after the tournament. All eyes were on the USA as they tried to make an unprecedented three-peat. After surviving an early scare against Turkey. Turkey has a two-point lead. With history on the line, the U.S. survived. Greg Popovich's side were dumped out by France in the quarterfinals. Milikina from deep. He still hits it. Mitchell goes past Gobert, but he gets blocked. France win it. Meaning there would be a different name etched on the new Naismith Trophy. Meanwhile, Sergio Scariolo's Spanish team went up against pre-tournament joint favorite Serbia to decide who would top their group. Ana Gomez, oh my words! Para mí, el partido contra Serbia, desde luego, fue el partido en el que me di cuenta de que habíamos conseguido ganar al equipo favorito junto a Estados Unidos de la competición. Además, ¿por qué no pensar en grande, no? Great pass. Spain moving on to the final four here in China. España. El partido contra Australia fue, ya te digo, de esos partidos semifinales, ¿no? Que un pequeño detalle van para un lado para otro. Now Rubio with a chance to win it. He puts it up for Mendo. Unbelievable. In a crazy game, there were chances at the end of regular time and at the end of overtime. And we've got double overtime. In the end, though, it was Spain who got the job done. Spain are going back to the final of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Waiting for them were Argentina, thanks to a standout game from veteran Luis Scola. His performances in China took him to second in the all-time World Cup scoring charts. I think I told Luis a long time ago that he was going to be playing until he was about 80 years old because of the nature of his game. Like his game is built to be timeless. It's always fun to watch him, to admire him. At 39 against a young team is remarkable. This is what you play for. the FIBA Basketball World Cup. It was a very emotional game. It was high-level basketball being played. Argentina played extremely well. Ultimately, the size is what gave Spain the huge advantage. Just a very big team. And here go, man. Goes in for the dunk. We managed to frenar them more their transition offensive, which was what they were able to live. We managed to control them more and we took them. Spain were led to a 20-point victory by tournament MVP Ricky Rubio. Siempre el momento de la celebración es un momento bonito, la suma de emociones, pero que sobre todo vives reflejada en tus jugadores y en sus entornos personales. Tú sientes que están pasando muchas cosas a tu alrededor, pero a la vez, pues miras a un compañero y conectas la mirada. Y sabes exactamente lo que estás sintiendo, sabes lo que tú sientes, y ese vínculo que hablábamos antes es algo que va, que va para siempre. The World Cup will be staying in the East, as 2023 has been handed over to Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines. The FIBA Basketball World Cup has left an indelible mark on the sport. Hey, rich, rich. And those who have graced its stage. The Pueblo. I've been so lucky to do what I love to do. Basketball takes you to places that I've never been before. Μεγάλο λόγο και ρόλο στον άνθρωπο που είμαι σήμερα έχει παίξει τον μπάσκετ. Όσκαρ. Ζηκανά στα τρίπλε. Τα μπόλα και κούσε ζώμου.
of representing your country, representing your nation, the people that follow you, your success is their success. It's meant the world to me. Šitas dalykas yra tikrai. Jeigu tikra meilė, tai jinai tikrai nepavos. We are international basketball. The world has come together as a community now. We are world basketball.